Welcome back everyone. It's time to get back to the roll cage. The main hoop is exactly how you saw it last time. And if you didn't see it last time, check out part one. And if you're just watching, I'm Ed. This is Edit Customs. We're working on the drift car. And that dog in the background is very distracting. So like, already back to the rule book because we're still not done with the main hoop. We need to put in a diagonal brace and horizontal shoulder bar. So the diagonal lateral brace. I forgot to silence my phone. Where were we? The phone keeps blowing up with side work for some reason. <laughs> it's only the middle of the week and it's been a long week. But we need the side work to finish the BMW. That's the way things are. Where was it? Diagonal lateral brace. That's what we're working on tonight. I don't know how I'm gonna squeeze all this in to my schedule. So diagonal lateral brace. It's a piece of tubing equal to the roll bar diameter. So we're gonna use inch and a half 095 wall. Installed across the main hoop to prevent lateral distortion. This way, show it doesn't, where are my hands? Show it doesn't fall over this way. The brace must attach to the driver's side upper corner of the main hoop no more than six inches from the center of the radius. It must be talking about the bend, no more than six inches from the center radius of that bend. And to the opposing leg, not more than six inches from the base of the plate. But we're just gonna keep it close to the bend. I already got a mark here that's within five inches of the center of this bend. We're gonna keep it on that side of it just to make sure we're well within the regulations. You never know, somebody's tape measure might be a little different and we're gonna make it within an inch. Let me explain to you guys how I got this set up too before I just get going on this. I wasn't planning on recording tonight, but I wanna get some work done on it while I got the time. So we're going for it. So bear with me. I got no plan. This is uh, just a jig I, ma I made just so we can stay within the confines of the measurements of the car. The bottom of this flat bar is where this is gonna attach to our rocker boxes in the car. We'll get into those later. This piece of angle up here, uh, th this is just how tall the cage is gonna be in the car. It's about an, an inch down from the roof in the car. So, well, our total height is uh, 38 and a quarter to the top of the cage. 36 and three quarter to the bottom of the cage. So, I got it set up like this, so any measurements I need, I can pull off everything that I know is exactly square. So, because I'm not sure if I'm gonna do a full blown diagonal brace or not. I think I'm just gonna do the one diagonal and a horizontal shoulder bar, just because it uses less tube, it's lighter, the car's underpowered, it's still factory powered. I wanna keep it as light as possible. It meets the requirements. It's, you're more than welcome to do more as long as it's in the confines of the cage. That's what it says in here. But the bare minimum is the diagonal lateral brace. No more than six inches from the center of that bend, out, or in rather, in towards the center of the car. So, and then within six inches of your base plate, which unfortunately is not a 45 degree angle. I was hoping it was, but it's not. It's 45. 45 puts us too close to the center. It, it won't meet our six inches up there. Just a little shy. Need another inch or two. And then it goes on, the horizontal bar is a piece of tubing equal to the roll bar diameter installed behind the driver's seat for the purpose of mounting seat belts. This tube shall be no higher than shoulder height and continue the full width of the main hoop attaching to both legs. And then the next paragraph, one of those bars needs to be continuous. I'm gonna make my diagonal brace continuous because that's how I wanna do it. So let's do it. Already got marks. These are within five inches, so we know we're good with whoever measures it from wherever they measure it. So we're gonna cut our piece of tube long at 51 inches. And now I'm gonna use the tubing notcher because, well, mainly because I suck at notching tube. I'm just not very good with the chop saw for some reason. It hates me, or I hate it. I think I have an aversion to it because I don't like grinding dust. But I really do like the angle grinder. Four and a half inch angle grinder, six inch wheel. You can do a lot with that. All right, we got our tube ready. Well, we got a rough cut to length. Now we gotta get some marks on here to make our notch. So 
I'm gonna be using a tubing notcher because like I said, I'm just not that great at notching tube, fish mouthing tube, whatever you wanna call it, with a chop saw or an angle grinder. If you want a really good lesson on notching tube, <laughs> again, Fabricator series. That guy's got really good content for learning. This just isn't the time to practice because this tube's expensive, so I'm gonna do it the safe way. But, figure out where this tube's gonna be about 48 degrees. You're just gonna eyeball down your tube and uh, just mar mar mark out parallel with this tube on here. You know, I mean, I didn't have to measure it. You can eyeball it in there. And then you're gonna make a face line, the line where this is gonna attach to the tube all the time. And we need to cut out one third the tube diameter for the tube to sit on top of the tube, which in this case is just gonna be half an inch up from our cut. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Ed, channel's Edit Customs. You know, you clicked it. So I was working on the main hoop yesterday, trying to film and do some tube notching and whatnot for you guys. There's this dog just barking like crazy in the background. It's driving me nuts. So, after the camera battery died, I pretty much gave up. But, I did continue building the diagonal brake without you guys. So back to what I was saying about this main hoop. You don't know what I was saying because the, the dog was barking. Trust me, it was annoying. But anyway, this is the main hoop for the E36. We put our diagonal brace in yesterday. It's coming from the driver, the driver's head to the other side. So if you have a left-hand drive car, it goes you know, behind your head. If you have a right-hand drive car, it'd be in the other corner. Pretty simple. We need to move on to our horizontal, horizontal brace. The horizontal brace is also a piece of tubing equal to the roll bar diameter, just like the diagonal brace. It's equal to the roll bar diameter. We're still using inch and a half 095 wall DOM. So, the horizontal brace is to be installed behind the driver seat for the purpose of mounting sheet belts. This tube shall be no higher than shoulder height. We'll have to measure that. We'll just measure up for, from the floor to the pockets for the seat belts in the seat. Yeah, no higher than shoulder height. Full width of the main hoop attached to both legs. So, and either your diagonal brace or your horizontal brace needs to be one solid continuous piece of tube. Not solid, but continuous. I chose to do my diagonal one continuous. But now we're gonna, we're gonna cut in this horizontal one and I'm gonna attempt to, to teach you guys stuff that I barely know how to do myself. So, if you want the really good lesson, Fabricator Series. Guy knows what he's doing. I just do things and hope for a result that pleases me. We're using the tubing notcher because I suck at notching tube freehand or with a chop saw. So let's get after it. I just have these vice grips here just to help uh, hold the diagonal in place while you're working with it. it makes it easy just to run it up into your corner. You don't have to go look at a mark on that side every time, especially if you're by yourself. Then we do your you can just clamp it back in, and all of this can be moved now. Well, your pipe stays in there. Okay. And this, I'll explain it again. This jig here, this angle is welded on here. That is as high as our cage can go in the car. And this is the bottom of our floor where we're going to set it on the rocker boxes. So all of this extra tube will eventually end up getting trimmed off. But Setting up this square jig gives you something to pull your tape measure off of so we can get everything square, parallel, straight, plumb, whatever we want. So, horizontal brace. Our horizontal brace isn't going to be able to be any more than 27 inches off the floor. We need to subtract four and three quarter from that measurement because that's how tall my rocker boxes are going to be. I've already got it laid out. I decided I'm gonna put it at uh, 24 inches, I think. I think I might move it up. I don't know yet. I think I'll put this in the car like this and then look at it. Test fit your parts, even though it's usually a bitch. The vice grip's hitting the door over here.
<laughs> also, this roll cage has to be within six inches of your helmet height behind. It's got to be within six inches of you. Well, I think I'm going to run my shoulder harness bar down lower, right where I had it marked. That way I can reach over this tube. I don't want to weigh up here. I want to be able to reach into where the back seat was. So here's what we're working with. Up here is going to be, this is the center of our tube. This is also the center of our tube. We measured up from a known good reference point to create both of those marks. And then I just use this piece of flat bar, although why not the greatest straight edge because flat bar isn't straight. I transferred the mark to the center tube. We can also measure from our point, our datum line, whatever you want to call it. Now we just got to make a tube that fills that area. We got our tubes all prepped and uh, clean. We're gonna tack weld this diagonal in place. Ish home, that's where it goes. I really wanna TIG weld this, but I really don't think it's a great place to start learning how to TIG weld. Might, I might go get some TIG welding uh, supplies tomorrow. I need 100% argon and I need some new tungsten. I have TIG welded, I'm just not very good at it. Watch out! I'm working here. I made an ugly mid weld. Okay, now we can make our horizontal shoulder bar. <laughs> Gonna get to it eventually. Can you guys see? Can you see what the hell I'm doing? Okay, we got uh, ourselves a 20 inch piece. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna cut the angle side first and then we'll do the 90 degree notch. So I already got the uh, notcher set up for, this is like 41 degrees. We're gonna notch it and see if it fits. You just wanna line up your hole saw right on the edge of your pipe for the least amount of material waste. Cause it's $7 a foot, roughly. I always just throw metal shavings everywhere. I should really dump them out first. We need more angle. This is why notching without a notcher would be much faster. I'm just, I'm really not that good at it. Nothing wrong with knowing you're not good at it and do it the way you know how to do it. Once we get this notch in here, we'll definitely have to make a reference line on here at like six and 12 o'clock. So we're loading this in the same plane all the time. See that? Dumped it out first. the angle. We'll just take uh, down this with the angle grinder. I think the angle's right. This just is, the throat's not deep enough. I need to find my ears. We're putting it back in the notcher. This is silly. I've been reading the wrong side of the notcher. No wonder why a little screwy. <laughs> There's something wrong. Gonna need a new hole saw. <laughs> Ow! Woo! Ow. Oh, that's better. It helps to understand your tools, I guess. I've owned that thing as long as, long as I've owned the bender. 
I've been reading the wrong side of the fucking dial the whole time. <laughs> no wonder why I suck at notching. Alright. Do this. The tubing notcher does pretty good, but you still gotta, you gotta take out some material here to get it, this part of the mouth to sit tight up against the pipe. Cause the way the hole saw cuts this, it just doesn't get it all out. So you gotta do, that's why I need to learn how to do it without the notcher, but I'm horrible at it. And this stuff's expensive. Sometimes just stick with what you know about producing constant results. If you change everything all the time, then you can't produce a constant result because you don't know what your change is affecting. And make one change at a time. And so we'll measure from this long side to this edge of the tube as soon as I spot my tape measure. It's be 18 and a quarter. I mean, that's something you just gotta line up the edge of the pipe. You just gotta eyeball it. Use the old icrometer. So it's 18 and a quarter from the long side of this. Make sure you give yourself some marks so you know which way you're cutting your knot. We gotta shut our tool back up to 90 degree. <laughs> you think after noticing this for so long I'd notice where the zero was and on what side of the fucking tool it was on. Nope. So we're gonna snug this in here and then I'm gonna bring you over here and show you how to make sure you get this, your notch cut on the plane you want to cut on. Plane, angle, I don't know. So we got our, our tool notcher all set to zero degrees, all our directions. So then we're gonna stick a piece of pipe in this notch and we're gonna set it to zero. We're gonna rotate this tube till this reads zero, which it's already at zero. I just eyeballed it. And then your hole saw is gonna be lined up with our 18 and a quarter mark. We're gonna leave it a little long we can always trim a little more off. Definitely need a new hole saw. Oh, it ended up way short for some reason. That's 18 and a quarter. It didn't end up short. I spoke too soon. I'll move you back over here. Oh, that a little better. How about over here? So you can really see. We're working on this side. We're working right here. Uh, you can't see my pretty face. No, oh, that's better. We'll get our vice grip back out. We're gonna put it, make the tube stop right where we want. Right there. Oh, it fits. Just like that. Oh, we gotta do that side. My buddy gave me this magnetic square. Look, look how big the flange is on that thing. And this is a magnet. Works good for two. It's a little high, but I think we can touch that up with the grinder. Get it set back down. I'm gonna do that other side. And then uh, I think we'll move on to a different part of the cage. Let me know if you guys wanna see. I was gonna break it down. Just like the rules. We're gonna build the main hoop in one video. We're gonna build the front and side hoops in one video. Although the main hoop is now two videos. And then we're gonna do our rear hoop supports. 
on the side protection, which would be our door bars. And then we're also gonna do the anti-intrusion, anti-wheel intrusion bars on this cage. It's gonna be a full 10 point. Just like this, top one. Cause we're left hand drive. Yeah. Do we take it or make it? I should just MIG wheel it so we can be done. I wanna go drifting. We'll get this fitted in here, tack weld it on, and then uh, move on to that side, I guess. I don't know how much of this you guys wanna see, man. Let me know if you guys wanna see something specific. I'm just over here winging it. Looks like that's gonna be our new height. I'll just match this one. I gotta cut another big angle. I was working on the other horizontal tube that's going in our cage for the E36. And I got it a wee bit short. So, this tube will get repurposed into another part of the car. And we're gonna try again. See if we can do it a little better this time. When you're building these, make sure you don't, get this last one you put in, make sure you don't push this leg out. You know, pay, pay attention, make sure you don't screw up your datum width. So, I'm gonna get to work, building another one. There's no reason for me to record it. You guys have seen me cut tube, clean it. You don't need to watch again. And it's cold and I wanna turn on the heater. So, I'm gonna. Stand by, I'll build a new tube, we'll get it tacked in, and I've decided I'm just gonna MIG weld all this stuff because I wanna go drifting. TIG weld a different cage after I learn how to TIG weld. I got shit to do. Oh, let's get after it! Okay. Finished up the horizontal brace. Got some spare parts out of the deal. This one ended up a little short. Try not to do that too many more times. I think I counted 18 more pieces to go. I could be wrong, but this is all I'm gonna do. This is the minimum requirements. I'm not gonna do the diagonal because because I want to get the car finished. I'm running out of time. So yeah, let's let's put this in the car and see what it looks like. I'm I'm pumped. It's it's really turning into a drift car. It turned out good. Let's go have a look. Well, that's it for the main hoop. I think uh, next, I think next what I'm gonna do is build the rocker boxes for it. So I can get it set it up on those. Get those temporarily in place. And then I'm gonna build the side hoops for it. Actually, no, I'm gonna build the side hoops for it first and then build rocker boxes for both of them front and rear. And then we'll build the rear bars for it. And then door bars. And then anti-wheel intrusion bars. And then it'll be complete. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, and I think I've decided I'm just MIG welding all this. Because I don't have the time to teach myself how to TIG weld. 
nor I'm comfortable with MIG welding and I don't want to ruin all the work that I put into this. So anyway, thanks for coming by. Stay tuned. We'll build the rest of the cage. And the rest of the car. The list is getting smaller and longer at the same time. Oh boy, thanks for coming by.